All right. Like I say today, we I look like a hot mess. We gonna conclude on our scriptures on the bit on division, Lord Jesus, divination. Talking about divination, that's of witchcraft. What we talked about last is like sorcery, enchantments. It's the work of the flesh, basically. It's you know things that we do in the flesh and not of the spirit. Um, so pray us in. Father God, we just come thanking and praising you for blessing us all through another beautiful day. Lord, we just thank you for blessing us as we went throughout this day, how you washed over us, covered in your precious blood as we travel to and go on the dangerous highways and byways. Lord, we thank you for your guidance, your protection all over us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask your blessings upon those that are traveling as we prepare to storm, rain, Watch over them as they're traveling those dangerous highways, yes, highways and those wet streets in the name of Jesus. Protect them in the name of Jesus that there will be no crimes against them. Lord, we just ask your blessings upon our speed, oh God, continue to bless those God. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask that you will bless those that may be on their way out to the Bible study. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, give them a mind that want to come back. <coughs> In the name of Jesus. And Father, we just ask your blessing continually on the Bible study. Bless us, feed us, till we sin no more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, feed your people. I don't know if that was a Harley Davidson I just heard or if that was thunder and lightning clapping. I don't know. But Lord, keep them safe. Keep me safe. And uh, make sure I got enough money to wash my car afterward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs> I was I said I saved a lot of money because it hadn't been raining and my car was clean all that time. I said I must have spoke too soon. It started raining. It was drizzling what yesterday or whatever. I say that's all right, Lord. I thank you for it because that that water came and cooled down that that heat exhaustion, that excessive heat. I say thank you for the rain, Lord. I'll wash the car later. <laughs> I say cool it down. Yes, we getting ready to be in monsoon season, you know, flooding and all that. That's why I wish I had my little SUV that I thought I was going to have because I was sure enough to keep that car in the uh, garage because it sits so low with them low profile tires. I ain't trying to be hydroplaning everywhere. But I got, you know, I'm still looking for a little SUV or somebody got a private vehicle or whatever, you know, so I can teach many me to drive. Um, Marcus, her, his roommate, got a, a car, and she gonna help him learn to drive. You know, Matthew got his car already. He driving all over. He doing Uber Eats and DoorDash, y'all. So if y'all call for Uber Eats or whatever, and you get them, bring you your, your McDonald's or whatever, it might be Matthew showing up. <laughs> and then he got a new job at Circa where he's walking around the pool, keeping people from being drunk and falling in the pool and everything. So if he can stand up and sleep, he'd be all right. <laughs> so yeah, he got, I, I, I prayed him off of that bus. I didn't like them stabbing and all that, and, you know. Yeah. You know, they was doing too much. And with Matthew being tired, taking care of his babies, you know, he got to go to that job alert. Yeah. So I, I was praying and God answered prayer. You know, he got a new job. He ain't gonna like me when, when he find out I was praying, but he got a new job. It's making pretty decent wage, and you know he out there to work, walk around, and stay awake. He work, uh, what he say, midnight to seven. So you know they in the pool at midnight because you know it's too hot yeah. in the daytime. So he should have enough, you know, people out there to stay awake. Um, but um, he like, can't sit down. He, to... he can't sit down. He got to walk around, and he's not armed. So it's not an armed job or armed security job, but you know he's just keeping the drunk folk off out the pool so they don't drown and stuff like yeah. that, keeping the fights down. Because you know once they get to drinking and get inebriated, you know that's when the party really starts. <laughs> you took my drink, right? Yeah, and don't mess around and spill somebody's drink. Yeah, you done then. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're going to get into what we say, 2 Kings 9.22. That's the first scripture. We got 12 of them. I believe we're going to finish this one today. Okay. And it came to pass when Elijah 
for Joram saw Jehu, that he said, it is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of, my, of thy mother Jezebel and your witchcraft are so many. All right, I guess that answered my question. That wasn't a Harley Davidson. That was thunder itself. That was the power of God right there. <laughs> so, and I see the wind kicking up and everything. So it's gonna be flooding here in a minute. But uh, you know, I'm all I'm protected by God. I ain't worried about it. He gonna He got me here. I know He gonna get me home. So I ain't worried about it. But yeah, we talking here. We talking about Jezebel. You know that spirit of witchcraft, whoredoms, and all that. With you know, it, it, there's no peace. When you are dealing with witchcraft, you know, witch, witchcraft is stubbornness, rebellion, you know, any works of the flesh, you know, lying, that's not of God, that's part of witchcraft is works of the flesh. You know, when you're around somebody that's always lying, a habitual liar, they're always telling you all these big old sub stories and prophesying and all of that to you and you'll never see nothing come to pass, that's witchcraft, it's an illusion. They painting a picture for you and you never get to see it come to pass. That's why I tell people anytime you got to be careful what you receive. Because if people tell you something and you receive it and you believe it, it changes your decisions. It, it stagnates you because you be sitting there waiting on something and it never come to pass. How much time do you waste? Like, I always talk about the women that be waiting on their husband. They tell, oh, I'm going to marry, I'm going to marry you. They sitting around waiting, what, 10, 11, 12 years? They ain't married them. You know, all that kind of stuff. Still waiting. <laughs> yeah, still waiting. Okay, when this going to happen? You got to be careful what you receive when people tell you stuff. You know, so I'm trying to build a life with you. I'm trying to, okay, well, when is this going to happen? You know, don't let nobody oppress your time. Because time is, that's the only thing. God give it back to you. He's the only one that can. He can redeem the time. And, you know, I'm too old to be sitting around waiting on nothing. You know, I got patience. But, you know, God give us wisdom, too. I ain't going to just sit around and, you know, let you oppress my time and tell me what I can and can't do. That's controlling. That's another witchcraft. That's another, you know, divination. Yeah. You know, being possessive and controlling and, you know, you, you got to get permission for stuff. No, God gave us, he made us in his likeness and his image, free will. You know, don't let nobody oppress your free will. Let's go to 2 Kings 17 and 17. Second Kings 17 and 17. It's all an illusion. That's what divination is. That's what witchcraft they, is. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantment and sold themselves to, to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke, to provoke him to anger. Enchantments, you know, they doing all kind of things. I know y'all seen movies and stuff where they be walking on fire, passing through fire. Yeah. Number one, you got to have a whole bunch of adrenaline to even psych yourself up to do something like that. Uh -huh. To run through something. Yeah. You know, you are tempting God. You are testing, you know, God when you do that. Because what if you run through that fire and a piece of your hair catch on fire and you still going to burn or whatever. You really testing. That's like them evil Knievels of the world that's testing, you know, they life. That's not right. You can't play with God like that. So, that's that's divination. When we, you know, play with God, you know, our life like that. Like, the, what was it? The, the devil tempted Jesus? You know, he said, if you just cast down, you know, we can't do that. Let's go to 2 Kings 2, 21 and 6. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe <clears throat> and observe times and use enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. See, so passing through the fire, putting his kids through the fire, his son. Observing time. Remember last week I told you observing times is like monitoring the holidays yes. or you know, Christmas or whatever. You know, that that's that ain't Jesus' birthday. So that's just what corporate America put out there to, you know, balance their books. 
and we honor Christmas like that, get in debt and all that, that's not serving God. And then we praying for God to, to fix our debt. And God is saying, I ain't tell you to get in there and do it in the first place. So we don't observe the times. We don't watch the moon. You know, we just had what they call a super moon. That's probably why we're having all of this rain and stuff. We have the super moon or whatever, you know, the full moon or whatever. I think that was a couple of days ago or whatever. I, I heard that was coming up. I didn't look for it. You know, I don't, I don't observe that. But it's supposed to be a different type of moon, and it's supposed to do some different. Well, you know, the moon controls the waves. It's the lunar activity controls the waves and the farmers. I understand all that part. But there's people sitting out playing and, and chanting to the moon because this super moon, you know, they pulling on the enemy. They, you know, praying to the devil. And, you know, that's a lot of witchcraft and voodoo and stuff comes out of that. You sitting there, you pulling on the powers of the devil. You know, God did lend him some power. You know, that's why he can do the things that he do. It's because he do have some power. And if we surrender to that power and not God's power, we done sold our soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, the music industry, a lot of them done sold their soul because, you know, Lucifer was the angel of music. Mm -hmm. They doing a whole bunch of other different stuff. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, like I say, enchantments and looking at lunar activity and, you know, lunar activity is what uh, our menstrual cycle is on. You know, for those of us that still have it, thank you, Lord Jesus. I think I might be a year. I think I might be actually menopause and not pre-menopause no more. I ain't seen that thing. And, and I wanna say, I'm going to look on my app in a year or whatever. I told the Lord I, I met him after the curse. I got him already. I don't want no hot flashes. I don't want no, no sweats. I don't want none of that stuff that no PMA. I don't want none of that. I just want to have menopause and I don't want none of the curse. And praise God, he has honored prayer so far. I ain't had to deal with that. And I'm still sitting up here. <laughs> Menopause free now. I'm menop I'm menop I might be in menopause, but I ain't got no hot flashes. I ain't got no cramps. I ain't got none of that stuff. But I'm, t I'm trying to tell you, I'm believing God because I, I got him. I ain't, got, I ain't under the curse no more. I got Jesus now. I'm, 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 I'm believing God that I'm going to go through and I'm not going to have none of that because I, I got him. I'm not under the curse no more. <laughs> I ain't going to sit here and turn beat red. I was watching my mama and go, I said, Mama, what's wrong with you? She looked like one of them cartoon characters with beat red. And she said, I'm having a personal summer. She said, I say, that's what that looked like. I said, I'll never want that. <laughs> I got Jesus, so I'm, I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the law. <laughs> so I'm going to have menopause, and I'm just going to be free, yeah. and I ain't going to have none of that. He's going to say, we like Sister Ruby here. Uh. My day is catching. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. In the uh uh, I'm praying. That he said you can have what you say. Uh uh, he said you can have what you say. I'm believing God to keep me from that. I'm really believing God. I, I don't want none of that part, none of that whatsoever. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look up my app in a minute and see. Yeah, I, I ain't got. I can't look on it over over here. The hormones and all of that. I'm so glad I ain't got none of that. I had never got And they won't give you, they won't give you more, no more hormone pills. They won't. They say it caused they cancer. Won't. That's the last I heard. Yeah, that's why they won't give you no more. Some things working good too. Yeah, but you know, they you can do supplements. You have to look at the like black cohosh, evening primrose, all of that supplements like at GNC, vitamins and stuff like that. You can do hormonal supplements and stuff. That's, I mean, if that's what you need, but I got prayer, I ain't going to go through that. <laughs> I ain't going through that. Lord, you said I can have what I say. I'm just coming to him. I got him. I don't need that. I ain't under the law no more. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to what I say. <laughs> I ain't going to have none of that. I, got, I ain't under the, what Eve did. I done came to him. But uh, let's go to, uh, where was we at? Y'all got me. Just did Okay. So, yeah, talking about familiar spirits and wizards and we observing times and stuff like that. We can't. That's um, divination. 
We can't be hanging out. Familiar spirits, gossip, you know, doing things, you know, with other people, you know, that we ain't supposed to do. Anything that's not of God can be under divination. It's the work of the flesh. Um, let's go to Jeremiah 27, 9. Every time I see that, they talk about my man Nebuchadnezzar. That's what that chapter, I think it's Jeremiah 27, 6, where he says uh, Nebuchadnezzar was God's Jeremiah, servant. Jeremiah, what? Jer Jeremiah 27, 9. Yeah, he said that was God's servant. God sent him over there. Y'all want a king so bad? I'll give you a king. Uh -huh. Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreams, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers. <coughs> Speaking to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon. Yeah, don't listen to him. Don't listen to the prophets. Don't listen to the psychic. Don't listen to the horoscope. Don't listen to the goddesses, the ones with the, you know, the tarot cards and all that. Don't listen to nobody but God. Because God is a jealous God and He don't like that. Don't listen to your friend that be gossiping. Don't go to your friend to solve problems because they can't solve their own problem. You go to God. That's all divination. You know, going to the council of another, you know, go to God and let God send you somewhere. Right. Let God give you the answer. Okay, let's go to Daniel 1 and 20. I ain't seen him in a minute. Daniel. I ain't seen my man James in a minute either. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers <coughs> and were all in his realm. Daniel was the one who was the one who was able to interpret the dream. Daniel 1 and 20. Yeah, Daniel 1 and 20. He was the one who was able to interpret the dream, and because he had the gift of interpretation, that was able to lead him, you know, and you know. They wanted to serve the God that Daniel served, I believe. Or was it, ain't that why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was? Yeah, I ain't read Daniel in a minute. So, the king listened to them because his own musicians and astrologers, you know, musicians and astrologers are, are of divination. You know, they pull on the adversary, the enemy. They pull on the devil to get they you know, they information. But Daniel pulled on God, the true and living God. Okay, let's go to Daniel 2 and 27. Daniel, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, and show the king, show unto the king. Mm-hmm. They can't tell you the interpretation of what the dream was, but Daniel, his God could. He went and prayed to God. So astrologers, they can't tell you your future, but they can tell you your past. And you can't go forward looking at your past. Normally, you can read these books, these um, psychic books and astrology books, and or what you call the Zodiac books, yeah. and it feels like familiar to you, you feel like you got some relation to it, because it's all something of the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it, they, it can't show you your future. Only God can show you your future because he sits in eternity. He sits outside of time to where he can see it. All these people sit inside time, so how they going to see your future if they inside time? So um, let's go to Micah 5 and 12. I don't think we ever been there. Maybe one time we was in the room up there. Yeah. How y'all doing? Good to you. Y'all got something going on yet? Bible study. Oh, okay. Bless it. Bless it. Welcome. I can't right now. You see it? I just came home. I'm soaked. I wanted to go up and change and stuff. Oh, I'm gonna, I gotta get a soda out here. Okay. Love you guys. Love you too. Thank you. Yeah. 
Micah 5 and 12. Yeah, we ain't been there in a minute because y'all can't even find it. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. He'll cut it off. God is a jealous God. He will take it off from among you because you're not supposed to be serving nothing but him. You're not supposed to look to nothing but him. So when we sit and rock and worry and we start looking to other things or how we're going to get this paid or how we're going to do this or do that, we actually not serving God. We getting the ideas from guess who? You know, the, the other little angel that's sitting on your shoulder in the red with the horns. You know, he's telling you to go everywhere but what God tell you to go. So we got to make sure we're listening to the voice of God and not even our own voice. You know, we got to make sure we listen. Because leaning to our own understanding is not going to not it either. That makes ourself a God. Yeah. Let's go to Acts. We over in the New Testament. Acts 8, verses 9 through 13. We talk about divination today. Talk about what? Divination. Don't divination. be doing, do, doing divination like, you know, psychic, horoscopes, oh, right, right. soothsayer. Uh, demonic. Demonic stuff. Satanic. Satanic. We trying yes. to stay away from all of that. Oh, we trying to, but it's hard to do. We we want that spiritual nourishment, but we live in this world. It's hard to escape. Yeah, we live in it, but we not to be of it. We don't want to be of it. Yeah. Uh, don't you believe we sometimes can't help it? You know, we touch folks. That's called self control. Self control. Self control. Okay. Self discipline. Yes. Okay, I just uh, <laughs> work on that. I see all. All right, that. bless you. Take care. <laughs> Acts 8 verses 9 through 13. Acts 8 verses 9 through 13. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, in the name of, in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was big and, you know, doing everything, you know, tricking people, great illusion, using the, the spirit of divination, which is the devil's power or whatever to do things. And then here comes a child of God with the anointing of God and, you know, baptized and, and doing stuff and, and turned him over, mm -hmm. you know, convinced him. So now he on the, now he on the Lord's side. He on the right team. So you got people that you know, big lion in it. I don't want to say too much because I'm on YouTube. But all this stuff that's coming out about our president being in some mess. He was a big liar the whole time. He just doing. He's so corrupt, and he's still in office. I don't know what's going to happen when it's time for the election. We're going to be so distracted by that. I don't know if somebody on the other side is going to try to do something to us because we're not focused. We're not alert. We're going to be looking at that. But that's a whole big old illusion that they had. Come on. <laughs> a whole big old illusion that they had. You know, got him and her in there. I ain't heard her too much. I don't know what she doing. They're always mocking her every time I hear about her up there. The VP. I ain't seen her in a minute. I ain't had the TV on for a minute. Today the first. Yeah, she was on TV yesterday. Oh, last time I seen her on TV, she was trying to convince Africa. Oh, last time I seen her on TV, she was trying to convince Africa to change their laws about 
LGBTQIA. That's the last time I seen her. But you know, she's real quiet. I've seen the former uh, first lady. She writing another book. She can put out the books. She just pumping them out. <laughs> I wish I could write as fast as she do. But she putting out them books. Michelle Obama. Oh, yeah, she got a few oh, books out. She yeah. She she so I be I got her on the podcast on my phone. I listen to her driving down the street or whatever. But I'm just saying she was active, you know, in the, her community. She was alongside her husband. But this one here, I hardly ever see or hear of her. And when I do hear of her, they making fun of her. Mm -hmm. They mocking her, talking about she don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she was a DA. And I was told she got her way up by, you know, putting us in jail off our backs, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know, bringing justice to her own people or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a big old illusion that we in. They hiding something from us, from the from the people. And they I guess they going after the man that put out the, the virus, that it was an inside job, that went out and killed all these people. I heard that they they arresting him. So they created it in a lab and funded it and everything. And it then when it got out. It got. It took more people. Well, let's just say it took people that they wasn't expecting it to take, and it got out of hand. And it's still going. It's just, still going. It's still going just because they ain't got it on the news. You know, I'm still hearing about people that's still catching it. So stay six feet away. Keep make sure you I always keep me a mask in my purse. I keep me one with me. I don't be up in nobody's face, no way. But just in case, you know, keep it. Um. Like I said, we're living in a big illusion is what we're doing because, you know, what we see is reality, you know, ain't reality because they got an agenda. It's always something behind the lines. We got to learn to read between the lines. So um, let me see. Let's go on to Acts 19 and 19. Yeah, we, you can look at something nowadays. I looked at YouTube yesterday, and there was a, they say he from Japan or China, I can't remember which one, but he paid $14,000 for somebody to make him a collie suit, a dog, to where he he actually, he said he wanted to be an animal, and he, he, he was actually out there being an animal, you know, moving very, very slow, I don't know if it was tight or what, you know, they was filming him and everything, it's on YouTube. He want to be a big old, like Lassie, a collie, yeah. you know, real slow. And, you know, he was, I ain't never known no collie to wave at you like that, but he was a collie. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, do you know what I could do with $14,000? <laughs> but he wanted, I guess he got the money to do what he wanted to do with, and he was a collie. He was a life-size collie. He's uh, Acts 19 and 19, a life-size Lassie is what he was. Lassie, Lassie that, that collie. Pretty, but what's the point? Mm. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found me 50,000 pieces of silver. People spent a lot of money in this divination. People spent a lot of money to go see psychics, the psychic hotline, you know, all these other hotlines and stuff they got going on out there. They spend a lot of money. And then, here they talking about they getting it together. They burned all their books. These are books on divination book that's got spells and, you know, teach them how to do certain things. So they, they getting rid of them because they want to be right with God. This is um, around the day of Pentecost. You know, so they get they, they in repentance is what they're doing. So they burned all that and they saying it was all 50,000 pieces of silver. That stuff costs a lot of money because the enemy wants to, he wants to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to bring you dry. These people that's running around here doing all of this cosmetic surgery and stuff, they get addicted to it and they can't, they, I'm like, they can't never be happy. They fix one part, they say, oh, well, this made this look lopsided. I got to go fix this. They ain't got no money because they, that stuff ain't cheap either. And but at the end of the day, they look, you can't even recognize them no more. No. They look like olive oil. 
Especially on one that can get them big lips. The huge lips. Huge. I mean huge. That don't make no sense. Girl that played on uh, Cali on um, uh, Miami and CIS. CIS, yeah. Oh, y'all watch some yeah. serious TV. I ain't seen that picture. I don't know when. CIS, <laughs> yeah. CSI? CSI. CSI, yeah. Miami, CSI. I don't even know who that was. That was the other one. The, 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 the girl that played Cali. I don't, I don't know their names. They had so many CSI versions. I can't keep up. <laughs> when your lips, now they said we had big lips, it was a problem. But now they trying to get big lips. Botox injections and stuff like that. That don't make no sense. They just say it looks good now. Uh -huh. And then when they get old and stuff, they pop and deflate, they look like a hot mess. They, it, I mean, stuff be sagging. Then on three, three men's, three men's and a baby. Three men's with Charlie. Three men and a baby. I believe it is. Three men's and a baby. Yeah. Three men and something. But the mother that played the mother, she. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Said you got to work the Ooh, I said, oh, oh just huge. Is. Right. Yeah. That don't make no sense. Your lips so big, you can't breathe because they cover up your nostrils. Yeah. That don't make, I don't know. Uh -huh. They want big lips and big booty. But it was wrong when we, because you know, we got it natural. We got it natural. <laughs> oh, and big breasts. Don't forget that. Yeah, we got it natural, but now it was wrong. Something wrong, but now all of a sudden they trying to do it. They jealous of us. No. <laughs> they she always said hers was real. I don't think so. Yeah, that's a big old wig though. Yeah, just like Shaka Khan. I used to love them too. I have one, but I don't have one big as Shaka Khan. I have one. Matter of fact, I had it on my the day I graduated with my doctorate. They, it was so big, they was hard trying to get the metal over my hair. <laughs> she said, you got big hair. <laughs> I said, I was trying to keep my head warm because it was cold. <laughs> I said, that's my hat. <laughs> All right, let's go to Galatians 5 and 20, y'all. We was in that hole. We should know these. Galatians 5 and 20, that's the works of the flesh. That's what divination is, when you're acting outside the flesh, acting out of your flesh, lying and gossiping, painting pictures and stories that's not true. 5 and 17. 20. 5 and 20, Galatians 5 and 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, vagrants, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, sedition, mm -hmm. heresies. Heresies, yes. Heresies. Those are all parts of divination. You know, hatred, when you hate somebody, that's not of God. That's a spirit that's not of God. It's an energy, a motivation that's not of God. That hatred will cause you to do something that is not of God. It will cause you to take life if you allow it. Strife, ang you know, that's being angry and causing, you know, you know, the seventh thing he hates is an abomination. That's the one who sows discord among the brethren. That's strife. You know, you coming in with that takeover spirit and you just, you got to be the one in charge and all that causing strife amongst everybody. That's, that's, that's spirit of divination. You got to be able to get along with people. That's why we are ministers of reconciliation. We get along with people. But I'm not going to get along with somebody that ain't right. If they in the flesh and they spirit ain't of God, I ain't going to go along to get along. I'm not going to do it. You know, you the spirit got to bear witness. If the spirit does not bear witness, I'm not going to get along with you. I'm going to go on, on by my business and let you sit over that. <laughs> now, if you want to be repent, do what you're supposed to do and be saved, I got time for you. But no, I'm not, I ain't going to help you be against my father's business, against my father's will. So, yeah, I'm not going to be in idolatry. I'm not going to idolize you. Let's go to Colossians 2. 8 and 10, and then we got one more. This last one, I've heard so much 
over and over and over because people just have, they don't have no new scriptures. Some people just say the same scriptures over and over and over because they don't have time to sit and read the whole Bible. Amen. Let's go to Colossians 2, 8 through 10. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That's what I always remember about that one. After the tradition of men. You know, tradition is out of is divination. When you do stuff just out of tradition, but you don't do it because it's the glory of God. You know, God wants us to come out of tradition. We don't know why they did the things. Like I say all the time, you know, somebody, I think it was, I don't know, it was you, Mother Ruth, somebody told me back in the day they used to cut off parts of the chicken or the turkey and let, leave that part off and put it in. Somebody told me and they put it in the oven and then they eat, but all that turkey was wasted. And then they kept passing that tradition on down. And then one day, one of the ladies asked, why we cut all this turkey, you know, parts off? That's wasting it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when they finally got the answer back down, they found out that the pan that that grandma used back in the day wasn't big enough to hold the whole turkey, so she cut off pieces of that turkey to put it in there. But now we got bigger pans, so why would we still cut off pieces of the turkey and throw that away when we could just go buy a bigger pan? Sometimes the traditions that we're serving are not conducive to this day and time. You know, times change. God moves. He flows. He changes with everybody. You know, we got to change with God. We can't be stuck and stagnant or whatever. So it's at the traditions of men what we want to do. When we get stubborn and set, set in our ways, you know, some of us, when we get older, we get set in our ways. I know I'm, I'm, I'm setting my ways in some areas. <laughs> you know, I ain't go, I'm, I'm just going to be set. But there are, you know, old, like old men, when they get set, in their ways, you can't move them, you can't budge them, or whatever. But that's, if God wants you to move, then you need to move. Right. You can't be set in your ways like that. We got to, it's got to be of Christ. It's not, it can't be of our own. Okay, this last one, 1 John 4, 6 through 8. I have heard it so much because this is scripture. Everybody want to tell you that you don't know God, you ain't of God. God ain't in you. God ain't this, that, and the other. And I just sit there and look. 1 John 4, 1 John 4 verses 6 through 8. Because I'm like, God invited me here. So God put me here. So obviously, I must have God. Uh -huh. We are of God. He that knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not. Because he that cometh of God heareth not. Not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So you run around and you're not loving nobody. You run around with hate towards people. You don't have no empathy, no sympathy. Right. I would rather have empathy instead of sympathy. But you running around, you see your brother got a need and you don't want to help him, you don't want to do nothing, that's not of God. Right. You run around lazy, can't, don't, you know, you were trying to get everybody to pay your bills, that's not of God either. God said a man don't work, don't eat. Mm -hmm. 
You ain't supposed to go. Like I said, that Ezekiel 34. You ain't supposed to go rape everybody. You ain't supposed to get everybody to pay your bills. You got to get out there. And, you know, if I'm out there working to keep my gas in my car, why I got to work and keep gas in your car, too? Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, some people think like that. You know, that you don't have God, you don't have love in your heart if you don't pay my light bill because I can't pay it. Mm -hmm. Get off your behind and go to work. Mm -hmm. Do something. Mm -hmm. I told my daughter, and she's doing good. She started going, you know, she had an interview at Meadows Mall at, uh, I guess, one of them. Yeah, yeah Rue 21. Them clothes in there smaller than her. <laughs> but they, they, she didn't get that one, I guess, because it was too far or, or you know, she, you know, never been in that industry or whatever. And then she had an interview today at McDonald's over off of uh, Craig and MLK. And um, the lady asked, say, this your first job, huh? And she said, yeah. She said, well, you're doing good. You need a help card. You got to come in here with a help card. She didn't know that. So, and me, you know, I'm letting her go through the process to learn what to do. So I said, okay, now, you know, we got to go get a health card. So we're going to get a health card, but I find out well, I was going to get it tomorrow, but I find out her permit done expired. She done done this thing, what, two or three times. Cause you know, they got the permit when I was trying to buy that SUV and that SUV never showed up. So they keep renewing it so they don't have to take the test over. So I got to go pay that to get that done. So she don't have to take tests to get her ID, her permit, valid again because it's expired and then we take that and then I set an appointment to go down and get the food handler's car so that she can have that and then she go back to the lady and show her that she got all her stuff and the lady she looked like she gonna hire her if she ain't hired up somebody else by then because you know all them kids gonna go back to school yeah. matter of fact they in school tomorrow mm -hmm. and she gonna need help yeah. so and Brianna is homeschooled she can work any oh, shift full time oh, yeah yeah no, wait, I'm sorry. School starts the 7th. You're yeah. right. Tomorrow's the 2nd, not the 7th. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's uh, the 2nd. My great-grandson my great, my great started last week. Last week? Where, where'd they go? Uh, he he goes that's, a, that's a magnet school. That's why. That's different, I think. Yeah. I Regular. I have to look at the, oh, the, the schedule, but I know Brianna starts tomorrow at homeschool. And yeah, Mark has been working all this week, but it's no kids. It's teacher in service day. So they just getting everything prepared and learning their trainings and all that. And then I got right. Mike, the kids I counsel, they don't go until the seventh. Which yeah. is next week. Yeah, that's your next so I guess that must be a magnet school or a charter school or something. They must have did yeah, something. He's in he's in grade. He's in oh, I don't know. They must have did something different with Mojave. I, I used to drive for that school. That school was something else. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. Or maybe he trying out or doing something. Maybe AP. I don't know how they started then, but yeah, because like I say, Brianna, she started today, as a matter of fact. Yeah, because she went in her class today. And um, yeah, and she got her stuff ahead and all that. The other kids don't start till the 7th. And Marcus, he ain't got no kids at that head start that he had. Matter of fact, he been in in-service for the last two weeks where they're doing the trainings and getting the new policies and gave them their raise and all of that kind of stuff. So he just going just to make a paycheck. He ain't got no kids. Next week the kids come. That's when the real work. <laughs> yeah. And he always coming up with colds and being sick. Lord, please don't let him do that. Well, I guess I ain't got to worry about it now because he got his own apartment. So I ain't got to worry, worry about coming bring no sickness in my house no more. But, <laughs> but yeah, he can't keep getting that. You know, he every week, he, you know, be off work or whatever. Them kids, I say, put your mask on, boy, do something. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they use this scripture here talking about if you don't have love, you don't show love, you don't show empathy. If, you know, somebody asks for something and you say, no, you ain't going to do it then you don't love them. You don't have God. Yeah. You know, God chases those he loves. Yeah. You know, like my son, you know, he 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 went through his time. He being a father, though, 
You know, I'm a, I'm a domesticated grandmama. I, I sit and I visit. I don't sit and rock. Uh -huh. And like I say, my son, like, mom, you want? He asked me the other day, because, you know, he, between, he working at Circa now. Right. So between jobs, he was asking, he said, mom, if I lose my apartment, can I come live with you? I said, boy, I can't have all that noise at my house or whatever. I said, you got to be on the lease and everything. He said, no, mom, it's just going to be me. I said, oh, I guess I can do that or whatever. <laughs> they say that. Yeah. They say that. Huh? They say that. Yeah, but no, she would just go to her mama house or whatever. They would have to be on my lease. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Then it's two to a room. That would be too much. Mm -hmm. But he say if he, I say yeah. But you know, if push come to shove, I ain't gonna let them be out in the street. I will probably let them have the house and I go sleep in the Cadillac because I ain't gonna put up with all that noise. <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> I gotta keep my peace or whatever. But um. Don't forget it. Huh? Yeah, they they big time. They grew. Yeah, they something else too. And uh, you can't tell them nothing. They ain't gonna like my house. They gonna have some rules and discipline in my house. <laughs> they can't run around there being spoiled. I'm the spoiled one in my house. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. Pray us out. Huh? <laughs> Yes. Or want to be here and can't be here. Yes. Let's bless all under the sound of my little voice. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Yes. yes.